also give me a second to bear bear with me to get everything set up okay and of course today we're going to be focusing on food okay talking about food topics and things like that so if you have a question about food or anything this is going to be a great time to ask me um, also we're going to be focusing of course on pronunciation but if there are other aspects of pronunciation that interest you you can always let me know as well okay and almost there and of course I do have the chat box up so if you guys have questions I will see them um, but yeah we're going to be again focusing especially on dinner type foods and I'm just finishing up getting this other stream going food in USA cool YouTube's going to be the primary one but I will also be paying attention in case people have questions in the second one okay all right so again, we're going to be talking about dinner food in the U.S., how to pronounce different foods um, for dinner um, in the United States. And again, we're going to be specifically targeting pronunciation, so specifically potentially things like vowel sounds. Um, if there's multiple words or compound nouns, we'll also be talking about uh, the stress, uh, where to put the stress and things like that. Um, hey, Miami, thanks for joining us. Um, you can see I am also streaming on YouTube. Um, so if you go to youtube.com slash fluent American, you'll see my main stream there. And on that stream, you'll see images and things that I'll be using. Okay, so I'm also streaming here on Lang 8 as well. But if you're interested in seeing the visuals that I have, then I strongly recommend going to um, youtube.com slash fluent American to follow me there. So that way you can see the pictures and things like that, if that's going to be helpful. But again, we're going to be targeting our food words. And let's see who we got here. Oh, Zabeda's here. Hasinovich. Hey, great to see you. I'm glad you can make it. Who likes to cook? This is great. Um, Sunshine, hello, hello. I'm sorry I've missed the last few times, guys, but it's great to see everyone back. This is great. Um, hey, D-Lab, it's great to see you as well. Um, so again, stream on another platform. Um, Miami, if you have a question, be sure to let me know. Hey, what's up, Junior? All right, so again, we're going to be talking about dinner foods and Miami actually asks a great question on the Lang 8 chat uh, asking what's the difference between drank, drunk, and drunken? Um, drunken, I don't even know if drunken is technically a word. Um, I think it's one of those things that native speakers sometimes use. Um, so again our question was drink, drank, drunken. Um, I know it's from Vietnam, that's great. So drank, drunk, and drunken. You know your typical forms for the verb to drink are going to be drink, drank, drunk. You know, that's going to be your standard format for that verb. But there are, um, you know, sometimes native speakers like to play around with language a little bit. So, like, you, you may hear some people say things like drunken and things like that. Um, but, yeah, your, your standard forms are going to be drink, drank, drunk. Okay, those are going to be your standard ones. Um, also, your, your past participle, again, drunk. So, drunken, again, doesn't. It's not standard, but you might occasionally see people use it. I, I've never used it myself, but yeah. Um, so again, and we have a question too from Hasinovich. What do you, is this going to be, what do you like to cook for dinner? So we were actually visiting. So last week I couldn't do my live stream, which was unfortunate. I missed you guys. Um, uh, but one thing that we mentioned was that... Um, Last week, I was visiting some friends at a lake, and during the lake, we actually made some dinner. So I made some gnocchi, which is like an Italian pasta, um, which is basically made out of potatoes um, and flour and egg, because um, I did spend some time in Italy before, and one of my roommates taught me how to make gnocchi and pasta um, and pizza and things like that. So definitely, Italian-style dishes are the things that I cook the most often, by far. Um, and oh, Miami missed our answer. Um, so, um, uh, Miami, mm. drunken doesn't really exist. The short answer is drunken doesn't really exist. You want to use drink, drank, drink, drank, drunk, drink, drank, drunk. Those are going to be your standard forms. Okay. But in addition to pasta, you know, the goal with this stream and this video, which again, you can see our visuals if you go to youtube.com slash fluent American, you can see the visuals I have. Um, we're not going to be talking, you know, about like burgers and things like that. Um, it's not going to be 
super helpful because I think most people are familiar with that. We're going to be talking about other dishes that are extremely mm -hmm. common in the U.S. as well, um, especially like if you go to restaurants and you're not sure what to order, talking about those things. Um, and, of course, if you have questions, be sure to let me know. Uh, D-Lad asks, what is my ancestry? So my ancestry, the, the short story is my dad is black and my mom is white. So that's kind of the easiest. I actually have no Italian blood in me whatsoever, even though I studied it for a long time. So my, that's your fun fact for today. All right. So our first words here. Uh, first one, the, again, focusing on dinner dishes, entrees. Uh, this is a pot roast. Pot roast. Okay. Um, so notice that when you say pot roast, you want to stress that first syllable. Okay. Pot. Pot. It's going to be your stress. It's that ah sound. Something that we've mentioned plenty of times before. You know, to make this ah sound, one of the most common letters for it is the letter O. It's like ah, ah, pa, pa pot roast. Second syllable is going to be your O sound. O, like in like go or slow. So like when you're saying pot roast, um, that O sound, you want to make sure again, it is a diphthong, so you're going to get some movement like oh, oh, but you don't need your lips to be super round at the end. Okay, so you don't want to round it too much. It's like oh, oh. Sometimes people exaggerate it and that's okay. Like if you do like an O, oh, O, oh, okay. But again, the it's not necessary to exaggerate it that much. Um, again, pot roast, pot roast. Okay. Uh, we have a note here. Drunken is a word. Yeah, like I said, you'll you'll be able to find it. But in terms of more standard forms, the most standard forms for drink, you're going to see drink, drank, drunk. Okay. But again, you you will see drunken appear. I won't say it's wrong. Our next word here, um, fajitas, fajitas originating from Texas, like Western Texas in the United States. Um, hey, Mary, thanks for joining us. Great to see you. Okay. And again, guys, if you want to see the visuals we have, um, you can follow along at youtube.com slash food American. Yeah. Um, Sun also posts the, uh, the verb forms for eat. It's like eat, ate, eaten, things like that. Yeah, those EN forms um, common for irregular types of participles. Um, so again, fajitas originating again from uh, Western Texas. Um, notice that this is this doesn't always happen in American English with the letter J, but for the letter J, what you're going to do is you're going to actually pronounce this as like a Y sound F, F or like a H sound Fajita. Notice that this is a case where the letter I is actually going to make an E sound, E, for instance, like in sleep, sleep. And one thing that a lot of, one mistake that a lot of people make when they're pronouncing, um, one people that a lot of people, a mistake a lot of people make with the long I sound is they'll pronounce it as like E, 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 which is like super tense, right? You're, you're really pronouncing that up here um, in your mouth when you say that E sound. And, which is fine, people understand it in the US, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're trying to get a more natural sound with that E, Really try to make sure that it's coming from low in your throat and it's relaxed enough. So see if you can hear the difference between these. So like E versus E. Again, E versus E. And if you can hear the difference there, you know, we really want the second one of those for like that E sound. E, it's a lot more resonant. It's lower. There's more air coming through. Okay. So instead of fajitas, there's more fajit, fajitas. Okay. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Ali, for talking about the subject. Everyone loves talking about food, right? Okay. Um, hey, Hasinovich, let us know, like, what are some of those foods that, from your country that you like to cook? Um, and also, so Miami mentions, I've drunk a bottle of water. I've drunk a bottle of water. Yeah. I, I think that, so Miami gave this example sentence, I've drunk a bottle of water, and she's like, this, or they're, they're like, this, this sounds really weird. Why am I saying it like this? Um. Why, why does it sound so strange? It's not so common that you would say, like, I have drunk a bottle of water. You know, I think the most common thing you'll see with that is probably usually you just use the simple past, right? There's nothing wrong if you use the present perfect there. You could say, I have drunk a bottle of water, but also just, I drank a bottle of water would probably be your most common um, answer. Also give it some suggestions for Minecraft. I have not actually played Minecraft before. One day. I'm sure my son will be interested in it one day. Um... Going back to fajitas really quick. Fajitas. So we get the f 
starting off with a schwa sound. So it's not fa, it's more f, 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 he. And then notice what's happening with this letter T. This is something I had mentioned in a previous stream. This T is actually gonna take a fast D sound. So instead of saying like tuz, tuz, it's actually gonna sound like a fast D. So it's gonna be more like does, does, fajitas, fajitas. Stressing the second syllable, fajitas, fajitas. All right, if you guys have questions about that, be sure to let me know. Okay, fajitas are delicious. If you ever get a chance, lots of meat, usually steak or chicken, peppers, onions, things like that. Next, one of my favorite foods is cornbread. Cornbread. This isn't really an entree. This is more something you have on the side. Okay, just a note. But cornbread, some things here. Watch out for these R sounds. So like for instance on corn, make sure that that R before the N is strong. Corn, corn. So it's not con, it's corn, corn. And key things for this R sound, you know, the back of your tongue is high. You can curl up the front of your tongue, but the placement should be low. I'm actually working with another student on this R sound. So for instance, in corn and you can have low placement, but if the back of your tongue isn't high enough, you're going to get like this con, con, but it's really more corn, corn, really making sure again, the back of your tongue is high. This is also a compound noun of sorts. So we see corn, which is a word, and we see bread, which is another word. And we've talked about this before. When you have two nouns that join together to make a single unit, a single thing, we're going to stress the first one. So it's going to be pronounced cornbread. Cornbread. So you don't want to say cornbread, it's cornbread. Can I have some cornbread? Okay. I'm just checking our questions. Um, let's see, we have a question from Zabeta. Is there a specific word for people who eat a lot? Um, I don't know. Well, people that eat a lot. I mean, I would say, like, for instance, there's like a foodaholic. Like a foodaholic is like someone who really likes food. Um, and you know, there's all kinds of like eating <laughs> disorders and things like that. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I can't think of a specific word right now for someone who likes to eat a lot. Yeah. Um, we also have a question. Um, do we Chipotle? So Chipotle is a restaurant. They use another word for pork, pork. I'll be honest. Uh, <laughs> My, I know they have, like, they have like, what do they have? They have carne asada. They have chicken, obviously. They have, and does Chipotle have chorizo, things like that? I'm not sure. Um, I forget all the meats. I haven't been to Chipotle in a while, so I forget all the meats that they that they have. That's a, that's a really good question. Um, we have another question here. Um, have I learned any languages? Um, yeah, I mean... I was an Italian major in school, um, and then before my son was born, born, I was studying some some Mandarin. But then it's a little hard to study a language with a with a toddler, so I've had to kind of put that in the back burner for now. Um, but yeah, so we talked about pot roast, fajitas, and cornbread. Sinovich mentions that they like cornbread. Why not? What's not what What's there to not like about cornbread? Okay. And again, if people in the Lang 8 chat, if you want to see the visuals I have for this to follow along, you can find the live stream also at youtube.com slash fluent American to kind of see what I'm doing. Um, also, just some quick notes before we move on. Um, for people who are interested in getting daily pronunciation practice or daily speaking practice and corrections, um, we have different offerings for you. Um, so for instance, we have a speaking group, especially for people interested in like IELTS and things like that. And then we also have just a general pronunciation group as well. To find out information about how you can get feedback every single day, visit patreon.com slash fluent American and you'll see um, information about our courses. Our next word here, which you can see in the, um, you can see this in the thumbnail, talking about jambalaya. Jambalaya, food from down south, okay? Um, we also have questions about live streams. So typically on YouTube, I live stream on Saturdays around this time. Um, I do other live streams and things on Facebook and occasional Lang 8 as well. Um, so jambalaya, jambalaya. Notice the schwa sound. So we get the jumble, jumble. Okay. Notice again, when you're saying that jumble, jambalaya, 
it, you can start off with like a dark L sound with the back of your tongue raised and the front of your tongue down. It's like jumble, jumble. Um, but you could also say jumba, jumba too. You may hear that as well. Jambalaya. The key stress though is going to be on that third syllable. It's like jambalai, I. Just like that I sound, like for the pronoun, I. And then uh, ending with another schwa sound. So you can get three schwa sounds in here. Jumble and then finishing with an uh. Jambalaya, jambalaya, which is delicious, especially if you like like di um, spicy types of foods, Cajun type foods as well. Okay. Hasinovich mentions that um, they are a meataholic. You need to go down to Texas and get some barbecue. They, if you really like meat, Texas is definitely the part of the country to go down to. Uh, and Mary mentions that they like um, everything made out of corn. Especially nowadays, it's very easy to find products made out of corn. It's kind of scary how much corn is in things. Um, Miami mentions gumbo. We'll talk about gumbo in a little bit. Don't worry. Um, next one, salmon. Salmon. Salmon's a controversial word, right? There's lots of people that pronounce salmon different ways. I think your most standard one that you're going to see in North America is pronounced this way, like salmon. So instead of salmon or things like that, um, typically that L is going to go silent in North America, I would say, okay? So, salmon. Notice that also that second syllable is gonna take a short I sound, like I, I, okay? Like quit or live, salmon. Um, Alaskan is just, again, re reference to the state where a lot of salmon is caught, especially like wild salmon. If you, if you get wild salmon in the US, a lot of it comes from Alaska. Um, so if you wanna say that, you can say Alaskan. Alaskan, and notice that it's going to finish with that same short I sound that salmon finishes with. It's like Alaskan salmon, Alaskan salmon, same sound sound, in, in. So make sure you're not saying like in, in, that's something I see a lot with students, like Alaskan. Um, and also make sure, um, for instance, for my Mandarin speakers, make sure that, that for that N sound, you're doing it with the back of your tongue down and the front of your tongue high. So it's not Alaska, it's Alaskan Make sure that the end sound is really clear, okay? Um, by the way, guys, if there's a specific meat that you enjoy, be sure to let me know. Um, I see some people enjoying meat, but I'm not sure which ones, okay? Our next one that we see is a California roll, which is a type of sushi, and but this sushi, um, relatively unique because instead of having, you know, your seaweed and then your rice, it's the opposite. You have your rice and then your seaweed, so they switched it up. Um, so a California roll. And California tends to be a word that some people have some issues pronouncing. So Cal, Al sound, California, Cali. You can also say Cala, but usually California, usually more of a short I sound. Forn. And then notice that last syllable, Fornia. It's like nya, nya. California. Um, well, sometimes some students will say Fornia or like things like that. Just, just pay attention. It's not quite the most natural way of saying it, California, California. Notice also that that stress is really on the four. So the other syllables don't have to be super, super clear. You know, you don't need to say like California. You don't need to do it. You just say California, California. You know, I don't even need to make a strong L sound. I can use like a dark L. It's like California, California, okay? Um, we have some questions about idioms and things like that. I'll be honest, this isn't the best live stream for that. I do have some idioms, especially related to like sports and things like that, which you can see on some of our videos, again, on our channel. And again, you can join us um, and see the visuals I have at youtube.com slash Food American, kind of see what we're doing right now. So I'm streaming two places. We just mentioned a dark L sound for California. You all can also have a dark L sound for that next word too, the roll, roll. So make sure, again, it's not roll, roll, but it's more Roll, roll, back of your tongue high again, front of your tongue down. If that's a tricky sound, really try to like just practice holding your tongue down and see if you make this sound like all, oh, all, oh, all, oh. just kind of practicing that. Um, some meats I'm seeing that people like, so mutton, turkey. I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest turkey fan. I definitely prefer chicken. Well, I'll, I'll eat it for like Thanksgiving, but not the biggest fan. Um, Sinovich mentions that Texas has very hot weather. That is true. My, we lived in Texas a couple years, a couple years ago, and um, I think it, it rained three days the entire year, my first year there. <laughs> three days the whole year. Um, 
there's a week where it gets to like zero degrees Celsius and then the rest of the year, it's really like, I don't know, 30, 40 degrees, pretty much <laughs> the rest of the year. Um, yeah, so beta, I definitely encourage you to try jambalaya. It's, it's delicious. Definitely encourage it. Hello, Gong. Thanks for checking us out. I appreciate it. To all my people I'm missing. Um, I know some people have checked in. Um, I really do appreciate it um, on the stream. So we talked about California rolls for my people who enjoy sushi. If you want kind of like an American take on sushi, California rolls. Uh, another American classic here is mac and cheese or macaroni and cheese, often just pronounced as mac and cheese. And so again, the, the short form is like mac and mac and mac and so again ah sound where you open your mouth wide you can feel the corners of your lips pulling a little bit it's very tense ma ah mac also again placement make sure it's low in the throat and relaxed mac mac and and then cheese again that long eye sound just make sure it stays relaxed enough uh, mac and cheese if you want the full form for mac it'll be macaroni mac schwa sounds like mac uh, mac uh, and then roni O sound, followed by the knee sound, okay? Um, macaroni, macaroni, okay? Macaroni and cheese, heavier stress on cheese. Macaroni and cheese, okay? Other types of meats I'm seeing, lamb. I'm a big fan of kebabs. Kebabs are delicious. Uh, beef, chicken, fish. I'll be honest, I, I'll eat salmon and I'll eat tuna. I'm not the biggest fish person i'll be honest like for instance this next one i'm not the biggest crab fan but another dish that's popular especially on the east coast no, northeast like boston area specifically um but all along the east coast also like baltimore um uh, crab cakes crab cakes this is another case of a compound noun by the way so we see crab which is a word and then we see cakes which is another word um so we can join those together um and you want to stress the first one so crab crab cakes so it's not crab cakes it's crab cakes crab cakes okay um crab key things you want to make sure again you're not rolling that r it's like cr so it's not cr it's more cr cr um ass sound you also want to make sure you're not inserting like a breath or a vowel in between the b and the c so it's not crab cakes it's crab cakes crab cakes release the breath on crab in the next syllable with the k crab cakes crab cakes okay oh gong thank you so much for the heart i really appreciate that that's great that's so kind of you um our next dish again this is not an actual <laughs> i've never actually had crab rangoons me i'll be honest I'm, I'm a horrible person um next one again this is not really an entree this is more of a side dish that's popular for dinner um is a baked bean baked beans Baked beans. Notice that your stress is going to be on beans. Okay. Baked beans, very common at like barbecues and things like that. Um, <laughs> Ali mentions that all the food we're talking about is so strange. It's so different. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I mean, especially compared to like Middle Eastern cuisine. Yeah. These, these things are very different. Um, a, a lot of, there's a lot of Italian influences. There's a lot of French influences. And then there's just some things that are just kind of from all over the world kind of mixed together um in the u.s yeah um baked beans again you could just have the beans by themselves they're really common with barbecue at barbecues a lot of times there's meat thrown in typically like pork uh, but it's not necessary to have that um miami says that you have to learn to love baked beans it's i mean i'm a big i'm a fan <laughs> i'm definitely a fan of baked beans i'm a fan i don't want like a whole lot of them but um i think they're good other questions here. So Zabeta mentions crab cakes, uh, sometimes getting mispronounced as crap cakes. Yeah. So watch out for those B sounds. Like when you're saying crab, let's go, let's go back to that for a moment. Um, when you're saying crab, crab, especially for my people in the Middle East, you want to watch out for those P's and B's, right? Um, so making sure again, that you're, you're getting that voiced sound. So it's not, p -p, it's b, b, making sure that it's voiced at the same time you're making that B sound. So it's not crap, it's crab, crab. D Lat says they like to dip potato chips into baked beans, and that's <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I've never tried that. I'll be honest. I'm I'm kind of a person. I don't do a whole lot of dipping and things like that. I like foods to stand on their own. But I wouldn't be opposed to trying potato chips in that. Yeah. 
Um, so again, baked beans, baked beans. And again, like we mentioned for that long eye sound, just make sure that it's relaxed enough. So again, it's not beans, it's beans. It's not beans, it's beans. Relax enough, lots of air. Okay. Um, our next one, for people who like sweet foods, but also savory foods. This is not just a breakfast food, by the way. You can have this at dinner. Um, chicken and waffles. And it's going to sound strange because it's like fried chicken, okay. Waffles, okay. But putting them together, um, a little bit unusual, right? Uh, but it's definitely something if you come to the U.S., I recommend trying. And I think you'll there's a good chance you'll like it if you enjoy fried chicken and if you enjoy waffles. Um, it is a... It's a match made in heaven. There goes, people were asking about idioms earlier. That's, this is an idiom for you. Match made in heaven. Um, chicken and waffles. Um, usually if I get chicken and waffles, I don't usually add syrup. Um, but you can if you really want that sweet. I prefer savory and salty myself. Um, talk really quick about pronunciation. Chicken, chicken. Notice again, short I sound chick. So it's not cheek, chicken. And also it's not chicken. It's not can. It's more can. Kun, kun. You're really closing your mouth, not letting too much of a vowel um, out. It's just kun, kun, kun. chicken, chicken. Um, I mean, you can ask a question, and if I have time, I'll try to get to it. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and then waffles. Notice that wa, ah. This is the same sound, like for instance, like uh, like father or stop. Wa. Waffles, so it's not waffles, it's more waffles. That's going to be the more common way you're going to hear in North America for the most part. Waffles, waffles. Um, Mary mentions that decided not to eat things without the face. That's a, my wife recently made a decision like that. She watched the documentary, what was it like it was the one talking about like the sea and like fishing and things like that. If you guys have seen that on Netflix, um, she was watching that recently. She decided she wants to become a vegetarian, which is. You know, it's much easier to be a vegetarian nowadays than it was in the past. Even five or ten years ago, there's so many more products now in the, in the vegetarian market. I think in general in the U.S. it's relatively easy to become a vegetarian. Um, yes, yeah, so we got chicken and waffles again. Chicken and waffles. Notice also, too, that you're just going to be on waffles here. Chicken and waffles. Chicken and waffles. Okay. Also, just a quick note, waffles. Notice that that S comes after the L. The L sound is voiced like oh, oh. So that means the S is going to be voiced too. So that means instead of waffles, it's going to be more waffles. It's going to be voiced. Slight Z sound. So make sure your throat's vibrate. It's not chicken and waffles. It's chicken and waffles. Okay. Our next one for my people who enjoy seafood. Oh, this picture is so small. I'm sorry. Um, probably doesn't do it justice. I'm not the fan of this, but if you like creamy foods and if you like seafood, then if you ever go to Boston or the Northeast, Northeastern part of the United States, then you'll probably want to try some clam chowder. Clam chowder. Um, this is actually a case where you're probably going to stress chowder. Okay. Clam, really quick, I just want to mention this. Um, so for clam, again, we have this situation where you have an A sound plus the letter M. So it's going to break into two parts, like am. Am. It's not clam. It's not clam. It's clam. Clam. So again, when you get this a sound plus an M, it's like you're going to feel your tongue sliding back. And then you're going to add a slight breath out of your nose um, before the M. It's like, mmm, mmm, clam, clam, clam. So again, clam chowder, clam chowder. Gong mentions that this stream is kind of like for radio. <laughs> Again, if you want to follow along visually with like pictures and things like that, you can go to youtube.com slash fluent American. You can see our presentation there um, as we're going through this. And also lets you see all the other videos that we have. Um, so again, youtube.com slash my name, fluent American. Next one, more seafood for my seafood fans. Um, we have a lobster roll. Again, this is again, if you're on the Northeast, um, or anywhere along, especially like the East Coast, lobster rolls are pretty common. Um, this is a case you want to stress lobster. Okay, lobster. This is another case too where that O is going to make an ah sound. It's like la, la, lobster. Notice that consonant cluster there too, right? You get the B, the S, and the T. Don't insert any vowel sounds in between that. Okay, so like lobst, lobst, lobster. And also make sure that last R is strong enough. Again, roll, 
like we mentioned before, making sure that it's dark L, back of tongue high, front of your tongue down. So it's not roll, it's roll. Again, it's not roll, it's roll, roll. Back of tongue high, front of tongue down. Okay, so just check out that, okay? Um, our next one, another pretty popular jet, pretty popular dish, uh, chicken wings, chicken wings. Oh, we have also, also a question too. Is the L in clam a light L or a dark L? Clam, you need for clam, this is a light L sound when you say clam. So the tip of your tongue should make contact with the top of your mouth. Cl, cl, clam, clam. It's hard to make a dark L with that. It's not clam. It's not clam. Yeah, I can't even do a dark L sound and maintain that. Um, yeah, so it's going to be clam, light L. Okay. On um, our next word, uh, chicken wings again. Chicken wings. Um, stressing chicken. Chicken. We talked already about chicken and how to pronounce that. Okay, so again, short I sound, ch, so it's not cheek, it's not chicken, it's chicken, chicken. So it's not chicken, it's chicken, chicken. So it goes right from the K sound to the n, k, and then wings, wings, short I sound, w, i. And then watch out for this NG sound, especially for instance for Russian speakers, Mandarin speakers, um, a lot of Asian language groups. Um, watch out for those NGs, it's like, mm, mm. it's not an N sound, so it's not wins, it's not wins. It's wings, wings. Watch out for those NG sounds. Okay, wings. Also, that S will have a slight voiced sound to it because the NG sound is voiced. It's like zzz, chicken wings, chicken wings. My favorite chicken wings are blackened. Um, a lot of like Cajun seasoning, a little bit spicy. Um, delicious. I mean, chicken wings are great. You can do whatever you want to them. There's all different kinds of things you could put on them and things. Um, what's not to like about... Um, um, What's not to like about chicken wings? You can do anything you want to them. They can put anything on them. Yeah. Hasinovich mentions that they like chicken wings. <laughs> exactly. How could you not? Unless, of course, you're vegetarian. Um, we had a question, too. How do I explain a glottal pause to someone? Okay. Re so they were trying to explain the word receipt. Receipt. Which is also important for um, food, right? If you go to a restaurant, you get a bill, you may want the receipt. Okay. Um, so when you're saying receipt, Notice you're not saying receipt. You know, I think a, maybe a, an easier example would be comparing like state versus stay, which we talked about yesterday, I think. It's like state and stay. Um, it's like when you're saying state, state and stay, stay. It's like state, S-T-A-T-E. What you're doing is you're, you're tightening your throat and your chest a little bit, and you're also shortening your vowel sound. So basically when you make that glottal stop, you're not letting the breath leave you know so if you're trying to explain it to someone else i would say that you tighten your throat and your chest so that way air can't escape okay so for instance if you say the word state and you make it really long like stay t, stay t, there's this moment between the end of the a sound and the t where things get a little bit tense and that's kind of giving you an idea of how to pronounce it okay um you want to hold that longer so instead of saying like stay you're just going to do state. So instead of stay, it's just state. Okay. Take some practice again on the channel, youtube.com slash fluent American. We have some videos that talk about stop T sounds, held T sounds, and just kind of stop consonants like that. Um, but it is something that takes a little bit of practice and getting used to. Okay. I'm checking in here. People enjoying wings and things like that. Our next one. So again, for my barbecue fans, my carnivores, my meat eaters, uh, ribs, ribs. And again, especially if you're down in Texas, North Carolina, or Kentucky, those are states that are famous for barbecue. Um, Got to try some ribs. I'm partial to Texas barbecue. It's a little smokier. Um, not as sweet. I'm not the biggest fan of sweet barbecue sauces. Hey, Abu, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, ribs, key things you just want to watch out for. Uh, short eye sound, so it's not re- it's re, short I, for instance, like sit or give. Um, also, that BS sound, I notice it's going to be voiced. It's like bzz, bzz, ribs, ribs. All right, just give me a second, guys. I want to take a quick drink. I'm smart this time, right? I brought, <laughs> I brought my water because last couple of live streams on YouTube, I definitely needed some water um, at some point. Um, but again, ribs. Typically, these are like spare ribs from like um, pork. Um, and then... Um, 
You can also get like beef ribs too, although it tends to be less meat. Um, d Lad asks, can we talk a little bit about venison? I don't know much about venison. I've never had venison. I don't know what you want me to say about it. I'm sorry. Uh, pronunciation is venison. Venison. Um, typically short eye, short eye sounded dance. Z is zin, is zin. Okay. Next one, a very common sandwich in the US is, uh, you can just say a BLT. BLT. BLT stands for bacon, lettuce, tomato. So that's, that's really all the ingredients. And there may be mayonnaise on it as well. I'm not a big mayonnaise fan, but if you like mayonnaise, this is a sandwich for you. Okay. Um, but again, to pronounce this, is just BLT. BLT. Notice the linking between the B and the L. It's not B-L. B-L. That's not linked at all. It's more B-L. B-L. So it's almost like you're saying yell, like yell or to shout. So you want to link it with a slight Y sound. It's like B-L. B-L. Okay. It's like B-L-T. Mm-hmm. Uh, BLT, a very common sandwich. Tends to be pretty cheap. Speaking of sandwiches, here's another type of sandwich you can get. Um, this is typically made with bread that's a little bit tougher than what you would get on a normal sentence. Um, it's, it's a lot crispier, crispier bread. Uh, and this is a, a po' boy. Po' boy. Po' stand in for like poor originally, but now pronounced as po'. Po' boy. Po' boy. Um, so again, type of sandwich, especially like in the South, um, Cajun or Creole. Um, po, again, O sound, like in go or slow. Okay, so like, oh, oh, okay. And then boy, oi. So it's not oi, it's more oi. Like everything we talked about with placement, you want to make sure that the sound is low in the throat and relaxed enough. Po boy, po boy. You want to stress po. Again, typically a sandwich, and typically with like chicken or shrimp or... Um, some sort of seafood. Next one is, oh, we still have tons of foods. So many foods. Ah, oh, I'm getting hungry. It's lunchtime here. I imagine it's dinner time for some people. Um, our next one here is a deep dish. Deep dish. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of deep dish, <laughs> Johnny just <laughs> joined our room. <laughs> um, so deep dish is, again, in, it's a pizza. Typically, it's famous from Chicago. Um, or Illinois, um, in the U.S., which is in the Midwest of the U.S., okay? Deep dish is famous for being super, super thick, okay? A deep dish pizza usually is not very big size-wise in terms of, like, the circle, but in terms of the thickness, like, if a regular pizza is like this, a deep dish is like this. Um, lots of cheese, that's pretty much it. Like, it's just cheese, <laughs> the crust is a little thick, but it's really just the, tons of cheese. Some people call it, like, a, it's like a pizza lasagna kind of thing um very heavy but it's also tastes pretty good um to pronounce this deep dish deep dish a little bit tricky because you have long eye short eye e e e e so deep long eye sound deep and it's not deep it's deep and then the second one short eye sound dish dish okay it's like deep dish deep dish okay um so that's our pizza for you Another one, so I'm originally from Philadelphia, and this is, if there's a food that Philadelphia is famous for, it is this, a uh, cheesesteak. Cheesesteak, okay? Um, just quick note for my Lang 8 people, uh, my phone is dying, oh no. Um, so if you wanna, I'm gonna keep going on the stream until it actually does die, um, but if you wanna keep following along, you can visit us at uh, youtube.com slash fluentamerican and see what we're talking about and also get the visuals and things too. So again, youtube.com slash fluent American in case my phone just dies on us. I'm sorry. Um, so again, cheesesteak, cheesesteak. Some people in the U.S. call it like a Philly cheesesteak, which being from Philadelphia doesn't make sense. Like it's just a cheesesteak. It's not a Philly cheesesteak. It's a Philly cheese. It's just a cheesesteak. Or some people just call it a Philly, but it's really just, it's a cheesesteak. That's, that's all it is. Um, cheesesteak, another compound noun. Um, you want to stress cheese, not steak. It's like cheese steak, cheese steaks. So typically it's like shredded, um, beef, very thin beef with onions. You can put peppers on there. Um, some sort of cheese. I like provolone cheese on mine. And then in a hoagie roll or a sandwich roll. Okay. Um, some other things here. So Mary mentions, I haven't seen a single man recent person eating pork. <laughs> Muslims, 
<laughs> Fnag Muslims never eat pork. I think Iranians make pizza, not in an Italian way. I, I I love seeing like different countries how they handle their pizzas. Because every country has a unique way of doing their their pizza. Like U.S. pizza is very different than like Italian pizza, which is different than like Japanese pizza, which is different than Swedish pizza, which is different than Chinese pizza. Everyone's got their own things on pizza. Um, speaking of pork and things like that, we I used to teach at a language center when I was in San Antonio, and we had a large Muslim population last students from Saudi Arabia last students from Jordan um and it's um they really 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 liked pork rinds they didn't know that they had pork in them somehow or they didn't know what pork was but they really liked pork rinds and so as teachers we weren't really sure whether to tell them like hey there's um you know there's actually pork in that um so that definitely can happen um we had a question to cheese steak versus cheesecake yeah, so again, just to compare pronunciation really quick, for cheese steak, cheese steak, you get that st sound, compared to cheese cake, where you get that k sound. So just kind of watch out for that. That can be tricky. Yes, yeah, steak versus cake. Next one, one of my favorite dishes is chili. Chili. It's, um, I typically like chili that's thicker, though some people like it a little soupier. But it's basically beans. If you want meat, you can throw meat in it, but it's not necessary. Um, celery, um, lot, tons of lots of different types of peppers, onions, garlic, lots of different things like that. Lots of tomato sauce seasoned with especially like cumin powder and a couple other things. Um, famous for being typically spicy, um, typically with like cayenne pepper, um, but you could put uh, hotter peppers than that as well. Um, but um, yeah, again, another dish famous in the South. If you go to Texas, Texas is famous for not putting beans in chili for whatever reason, but I'm definitely, I definitely put beans in my chili. Um, but yeah, so chili, notice how we're pronouncing this, chill, short I sound, chill. And that short I and L sound tends to be a little bit tricky. It's like chill, so chill. So it's not chill, it's chill, chilly, chilly chili you can actually pronounce this entirely with a dark l you don't need to use a light l sound for this like chili chili but if you'd like to you can do a light l sound for this too like chili okay it's so it's, it's it's really up to you it's your choice okay um let's see i think Iranian pizza ellie says you could cheat them instead of the calf with the pork they'll know <laughs> this is true you know i've also seen students uh, as some of my um Saudi Arabian students like things like pepperoni and things like that. Like, I think it's just like not being aware that some things contain pork. Um, Ellie, how can you say there's not food in the U.S. just fast? I mean, this is it. This is largely not fast food stuff. Most of these dishes take some time to to make. You know, I know that the, in like the media and stuff, they always like to pick out fast food. But these are all dishes that, you know, in terms of dinners that people make at home. I mean, these are all things that you'll find. Um, next one, again, for my barbecue lovers, uh, pulled pork, pulled pork. Um, Amy said, oh, it was, it was in the YouTube chat. It wasn't in the, um, the chat here. Um, uh, pulled pork, pulled pork. So a couple of things you want to watch out for that uh sound, for instance, like in book or good pulled. This is that same uh sound. So it's not pulled, it's pulled. Uh sound, dark L, back of your tongue high, front of your tongue down. Hold that front of your tongue down. Pull, pull pulled and then finish with a d sound d pulled pulled pork pulled pork okay um michael and langate says hey i've never seen you before this is first time streaming um i've streamed a couple times this week um but they've all been at different times so it's definitely possible that we, we've missed each other um so again uh pulled pork so again pulled pork um stress more pork than on pulled it's like pulled pork um, pork again with that or sound. So it's not or, it's or, or again, like we talked about before for placement, low in the throat and relaxed pork, pull pork. Okay. Pull pork is one of my favorite foods. Another barbecue type food is brisket, brisket with a short I sound. Okay. Brisk. So it's not brisk. It's more brisk, brisket, brisket. We mentioned too, like that stop T that glottal T sound earlier you'll, you'll get it here too so you don't need to say brisket you can hold that t sounds like brisket brisket okay um some other things chili and sp can we use chili and spicy this is a question from zobeda and youtube um 
So chili and spicy are not interchange. So chili is a food. Okay, chili is a food. If you use chili as the adjective, chili means like cold. Okay, like oh, it's it's chilly in here. Here, Brr, like I need a coat. It's chilly in here. Um, so the so just be careful with that. Um, spicy means like a, a synonym for spicy would be hot. Not hot temperature wise, but hot again like spice. Like you feel it on your tongue. Okay. Um, so just know about that. So again, uh, brisket, brisket. <laughs> And what else? What else? Checking in again in the chat, see if I'm missing anything. Okay. Um, last couple words here. I do have to teach a class in a couple minutes. And Lang 8, we're still alive, and my battery is slowly dying. Um, gumbo. I think someone had mentioned this word earlier, and I told you it was coming. Um, gumbo, another southern dish. Okay. Okay. Gumbo. A couple things here. Gum. Schwa sounds. So it's not gum. It's not gum, it's gum, gum. Really relax your mouth, relax your tongue, relax your lips. Everything's relaxed, low in the throat. It's like, uh, guh, gum, gum. Finishing with the O sound, strong O sound. Bo, bo, gumbo, gumbo. You wanna make sure, this is especially true for like Russian speakers and sometimes even my Mandarin speakers. Um, make sure that the O sound is strong at the end. So it's not gumbo, it's gumbo. So it's not gumba, it's gumbo. Make sure that that final O is strong. Okay. Um, we had a question from Mary on YouTube. Um, would you be able to introduce us to some Amish food? I wish I could. Unfortunately, I've never actually been to that part of Pennsylvania. I've never been to like, there's like a part of Pennsylvania called Pennsylvania Dutch country where a lot of Amish people live. But I've never actually been to that part of the state before. Um, so I'm not super familiar with the type of food that Amish people eat. But I can do some research. I can try to, to find some. It's a really great question. Um, last couple of foods. Um, chicken pot pie. Chicken pot pie. This is a case of like a three-word group. Um, if you're familiar with my videos on stress on the channel, again, youtube.com slash American. If you're familiar with those stress videos, we talk sometimes about three-word groups. And when this happens, you want to stress a little bit the first word but then a heavier stress on the last word. So for instance, chicken pot pie. Pie should be your heaviest stress. Chicken gets a little bit of stress, pot gets reduced, and then pie gets a heavy stress. It's like chicken pot pie, chicken pot pie, okay? Heavy stress on pie. I sound, again, mouth really wide. Notice how wide my mouth is. I, I, chicken pot pie. Okay, and it's relaxed, lots of air. So it's not pie -y. It's pie, chicken pot pie. All right, and we are definitely nearing the end. Uh, <laughs> Miami says we love alliteration. Yeah, with the pot pie. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is one of the last foods I have. Um, if you guys have some questions for me um, that we've missed and things like that, be sure to let me know. Um, I'll be happy to, to talk about them related to food or other things as well because I have a couple minutes before my class. Um, our last word here is a casserole. Casserole. There's all kinds of different casseroles. You know, there's tuna casserole, there's broccoli casserole, there's chicken casserole. There's, there's all kinds of casseroles. I don't even really know what the definition of a casserole is. It's just something that's relatively common for people to make. Um, Ellie asked a question like rocket, like rocket greens. I'm not entirely sure what the reference to rocket is, Ellie, if you can clarify. Um, yeah, so like a broccoli casserole, a green bean casserole. Um, stressing the first syllable, so that, that's the one that you really want to make sure you pronounce clearly with the ah sounds like ca. Everything else can be uh, more relaxed. Casserole, casserole. This is another case too where the L sound is going to be more of a dark L. So it's not casserole. It's not really l, l. It's more casserole with a dark L. Again, raising the back of your tongue, lower the front of your tongue. Casserole, casserole. That is a lot of food. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to review just pronunciation for all of the words that we've just discussed. Um, if you have questions for me, let me know. And after that, we'll kind of wrap up. Okay, so again, really quick, lightning round. Um, pot roast, fajitas, cornbread, jambalaya, Alaskan salmon, California roll, macaroni and cheese, or just mac and cheese, 
crab cakes, baked beans, chicken and waffles, clam chowder, a lobster roll, chicken wings. Good question how is jambalaya spelled? It's J U M B A L um, A Y A. Um, ribs, B L T, po' boy, deep dish, cheesesteak. Chili, pulled pork, brisket, gumbo, chicken pot pie, casserole. All right. Um, we have a note here on practicing tomato. Notice that in tomato in the U.S. is pronounced tomato. That um, that A sound followed by a fast D sound. It's like ado, ado, tomato. First syllable typically a schwa sound. It's like t, t, tomato. Really making sure that the second syllable is strong. All right, other questions. Off topic question, how do you pronounce the U in book and the T in eight? We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, hey, Mary, thank you so much for your kind words. I really appreciate it. Um, that's, that's really sweet. Um, saying she enjoyed herself on the YouTube chat. Um, so let's talk really quick about um, the U sound in book. Book. This is also, for instance, in words like good or should or look. Okay. This U sound, what you're doing is you're raising the back of your tongue and you're lowering the front of your tongue, okay? It's like, uh, uh. What you don't want to do is you don't want to pronounce it like, ooh, ooh. That's why I see a lot of students pronounce it like, book, book, or things like that. You don't want round lips. You want your lips to be a little straighter. Pull your lips more, okay? You can also open your mouth a little wider. Uh, uh, buh, buh. So again, it's not boo, it's more buh, buh. And then of course, placement, as always, low in the throat and relaxed. Buh, buh, okay? Um, so maybe if that helps, let me know. Um, so again, like book, good, look, took, should, would, could, all those uh, sounds. Um, another question too about the, the, the T and eight. Um, so this kind of goes back to what we're talking about. Held T's, stop T's. Eight's going to be the same thing. Um, so like, um, uh, held T. So you're just going to stop the breath. Don't let the breath escape. So like when you say eight, instead of doing eight, it's going to be more eight, eight. I'm not letting the breath escape. Compare a word like, for instance, like, um, like hey versus hate. Hey with the A sound, H-E-Y, hey versus hate, hate, which is more the held sound. Okay. So definitely compare those. Um, we definitely talk about that sound in other videos too. So beta, so definitely check those out. Um, booger, book, booger. Yeah, I guess booger does actually have the uh sound. It's different than like fun. Like it's not bugger, it's booger. Yeah, um, that was from the other chat. Um, foo, so Ali asks, what about food? Does food have the same pronunciation as book? Food actually is going to have the ooh sound, like in tooth or lose. So food is actually ooh sound, where the back of your tongue is high and the front of your tongue is down, but your lips are round. Okay. So for instance, food, food, ooh, ooh, food. Okay. A similar word to food, um, or actually a good comparison between the uh sound and the ooh sound is like foot versus food, foot, food. Okay. And if this is a confusing pair, definitely check out our channel because we have some videos that have some minimal pair exercises to practice both of those. Okay. All right. Whew. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Dila, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Again, for visuals, you can check out the, the, the actual video to stream again on our YouTube channel. Um, for everyone else checking us up on Lang, Lang 8, you can check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash fluent American. We have lots more pronunciation videos and things like that for practice. Um, Everyone who joined me on YouTube, thank you guys so much. It's great to see everybody. Ali, always a pleasure. Uh, Mary Sinovich, thanks for jumping in. Um, Zobeda, as always. Um, Son, I know you stopped in earlier. I'm not sure if you're still here. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much. Enjoy your weekend. You guys take care. Have a good day. Have a good night. A good afternoon. And I will see you guys soon. All right, you guys take care.